What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to build some backyard games to expand our small business. Let's get into it. So the two games that I'm going to build in this video are Connect 4 and Jenga. Obviously being that these are outdoor games, they're going to be giant versions of both. To get started, I started off with an eighth inch piece of plywood that I'm going to use for the face of the Connect 4. I ripped this to the approximate size that I thought the pattern would fit on based on the holes I intended to use. If you guys haven't watched any of my videos, this Makita track saw I'm using is awesome. I highly recommend getting one if you're ripping down any kind of sheet goods. Unfortunately, because I was using some lower grade plywood, I was suffering some tear out because the veneer was so thin on the top layer of the plywood. So I ended up using some masking tape or blue painters tape to try and minimize this. It worked to a certain extent, but I still ended up with some tear out. Next, I ripped down a sheet of three quarter inch plywood just to make it a little bit easier to run through the table saw, being that I only have a small job site version. This piece would ultimately be used for the spacers that would go between the two face plates, I guess we could call them, where the holes would later be drilled to make the board of the game. I ended up making one inch strips so that a three quarter inch disc would fit with an eighth of an inch of play on either side when you drop them in between. Next up, I clamped the two sheets of 8th inch plywood together and got to marking out where all the holes would go. This ended up being a little more time consuming and difficult than I thought it was going to be, as funny as that sounds, and I ended up using a couple different methods to get this process done. As you can see, I used a small square the same size as the holes that I was drilling to make it a little bit easier to space out the vertical separation pieces. With everything laid out, I used the hole saw to drill the pattern of all the holes, which ended up being very taxing on my drill. Truthfully, if I did this again, I probably would have made a template out of a piece of MDF and then used a router to cut all the holes. I think this would have also saved on having to router every hole and sand every hole to such a crazy extent because the hole saw really did a rough job of cutting the holes. With the holes all drilled, I cut the faceplate to the final size. I ended up using a combination of the round over bit on the router, the spindle sander, and a hand sander to get the board smooth and ready for paint. After a lot of sanding with various grits, I primed both sides of the plywood and filled a few of the voids created in the plywood by the hole saw. I decided to go with this enamel uh, type paint that's typically used for cabinets because I wanted a harder finish that would be a little more durable. And honestly, if you're doing this at home, as you'll see later on in the video, use a roller. The brush didn't end up being the fastest way to do it. 
with the inside faces primed and painted, I got to cutting the vertical separation pieces, I guess you could call them, to the right length. With all the pieces cut to the right length and centered up, I used the finish nailer to nail them into place. I made sure to be careful here when I was lining up the second face piece in order to prevent the holes from not lining up due to some variation in the drilling. So because I cut all those spacer pieces out of that three quarter inch plywood, I needed a little bit of extra material on either side to allow for attaching the legs later. So I cut a small filler piece to fill this area in. Now because I wasn't building off any kind of a real plan, I just did some quick measurements to get the height of the legs to make the game a decent height so that adults wouldn't have to bend over too much and kids could still play it. Because I'm crazy and I didn't want to make it look like I used two by fours for this, I cut all the rounded over edges off that are standard on structural lumber. I then got to marking out all my pieces and constructing the legs. For all the joints here, I just used pocket holes and glue to make sure that it was very strong and I wouldn't have any problems with it in the future. So because I didn't want to see any of the screw holes where I put the pocket holes, I decided to pop some dowels in with some glue to cover up the holes. This worked pretty well until I ran out of dowels. Luckily, I watched a video recently from Bourbon Moth that showed me how to make dowels at home by drilling a hole through a piece of some plate steel or angle iron, the size of the dowel you want, and then running it on the drill through that hole. You just have to make sure that the square piece that you start with isn't too large and you wind up with a perfect dowel. It also helps to taper the end so that inserting it into the hole that you drilled is a little bit easier.
Next up, I marked out three equally spaced holes that would be for mounting the legs to the side of the board. I used these thread inserts so that I could use machine screws to hold it all together so it could be easily disassembled for storage. If you decide to go with the fastener like this ever for any kind of project, I highly recommend the ones that have the hex head rather than the screwdriver head because I found that the screwdriver type break off pretty easily if you're not very careful. With the glue all dry on the dowels, I cut them off with a trim saw and then sanded everything smooth and filled in all the holes with wood filler. I then used an eighth inch roundover bit on all the edges for the legs to make everything nice and smooth. The last step on the legs was to drill a couple holes that would hold carriage bolts with wing nuts so I could easily take off the wide sections at the bottom to again make storage easier. Following that I got a quick coat of primer on the legs and got to making the discs while that dried. This by far was the most time consuming process of this entire job. So to make a disc Without a hole in the center of it, using the hole saw, I made a template out of three quarter inch plywood. The template basically consisted of two guide rails with a hole drilled in the center of it that I would use a square blank to cut the pieces out of. Not really sure if that makes sense, but you'll see what I mean. Basically what this template allowed you to do was use the hole saw without the arbor in it so that you didn't end up with the pilot hole in the middle of the disc. Next, I cut the stock pieces to fit inside the jig and look at that perfect circle with no pilot hole in the middle. Because these circles are about five inches round and made out of three quarter inch plywood, I didn't want them to just free fall to the ground every single time you reset the game. So I decided to build a little tray that would also act as a neat way to store the pieces when people weren't playing the game. If you've never tried this trick using blue painter's tape to hold a joint together while you're doing your glue up, you're really missing out. This made getting a nice sharp edge relatively easy. Obviously that depends on how well you cut your bevel, but it was much easier using the tape method than trying to hold this all while gluing and nailing it. Give it a shot the next time you try one of these joints. To finish this tray off, I cut some triangle end caps and glued and nailed them in as well. So unfortunately I lost the GoPro footage of me cutting the blocks for the Jenga. Essentially what I did was cut 10 and a half inch blocks using a stop block on the chop saw. And then we sanded and wiped them down with this feed and wax, which is just a wood wax that gave them a nice finish and allowed them to slide easily between one another. I then measured the size of two stacks of the blocks side by side to create a crate to store them in and transport them. For the discs for the Connect 4, I stained half of the pieces and then wiped them both down with the same feed and wax because I liked the way that the Jenga pieces turned out. 
With the Connect 4 legs dry now, I did a test fit to make sure everything still fit correctly before disassembling and worrying about the slide mechanism to hold the discs in while playing the game. I kind of messed this up and there was probably a better way to do it, but I ended up having to router down the center divider sections to make all the discs line up correctly with the layout of the board. This piece ended up being pretty elaborate, but in the end it worked pretty well. So because I needed something to mount the slider to, I had to add these white trim pieces. And honestly, I think it added a pretty nice look to the board. Next, using the same thread inserts that I used to hold the legs on the board, I added the tray to catch the pieces and store the pieces. With the tray on, I moved on to adding rope handles to the box to store the Jenga pieces. Again, this is some of the footage that was lost from the GoPro camera. But for this, it was basically just three quarter inch plywood that I made a box that would fit all the pieces. Pretty straightforward. An important tip, if you've never used this nylon rope before, make sure you burn the ends and it keeps it from fraying. Overall, I think these backyard games came out great. This is one of those projects that took a lot longer than I anticipated, like most projects that I do. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.